This episode contains adult language and topics that may be disturbing for some listeners. Such topics include suicide, drug use, physical or sexual abuse of a child. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Grant. And I'm Erica. And this is From From Crime Crime to to Crime. Crime. Welcome back to From Crime to Crime, or should I say Happy Halloween from From Crime to Crime. Oh, yeah, because this should be coming out right before Halloween. Yeah, we're not totally sure. We recorded this one quite a ways before Halloween, but we anticipate that it will come out near Halloween. So happy Halloween to from us in the past. <laughs> yeah, if we math right, <laughs> this should come out right before <laughs> Halloween. Well, if if it was up to us in the math, then it's obviously coming out around Christmas or so. So maybe Merry Christmas, but you know. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll just cover them yeah, all. Yeah, what else do we have? Um, oh, I, my anniversary is coming up in November, so we'll just we'll cover that base. Happy birthday to my wife on the 21st. We don't know when this is going to come out, so we're just got to we just got to get them all out there. Anything Oh, your husband, happy birthday to Matt. Um, yep. do we have anybody else? My dad. Your dad. Okay. <laughs> so we've covered Ella. Ella. <laughs> we, gosh, do we have any other like dogs? Evie. Evie. Okay. Anybody else? I think that covers it. Happy New Year just in case or what? No. Right. I think that covers all it. Right. Well, let's get into this cuz this is going to be a very twisty turny episode that i think pisses both of us off doesn't it yeah and normally i rush you through like the opening like hurry up let's get to this because the episode is going to be really long but i don't think that's the case with this one because there's a pretty severe lack of information on this case which is kind of disturbing it is disturbing because this case seems super solvable and in my opinion it should be super solvable solvable so yeah so there's only like a couple of credible sources on this case and One of them is like an old newspaper article, and then one of them is the website for the Indiana State Police. But even that one, they have conflicting information. So it's like, are the police wrong or is the family wrong? I just think nobody really has any idea what actually happened in all of this. Yeah. But I mean like date discrepancies, which is kind of weird. So we'll go over it. But there is, however, a plethora of information about Larry on Reddit, which is... Not my favorite thing and super not credible, but it's what we have, so. Oh, Reddit, your favorite place. Yeah, so we're going to be doing a lot of wild theorizing in this case, so. All right, well, let's take it away. Yep, so we're going to start in January of 2003. Larry Groves was a 40-year-old antique dealer who lived in Lakeside, Indiana. I actually am curious this week, who? what was the number one song? Because (laughs) I was born in January, as you know, so. that Dude, we didn't even cover your birthday. If this is still coming out in December... (laughs) Happy birthday to Erica, too. God, why didn't you say anything? We're in October here. Well, I know that. But if it comes out in December, like we said, we covered everything except your birthday. Oh, well, that's right. The number one song was 19-something by Mark Wills. Do we know that one? I know who Mark Wills is. Yeah, you know it. it? Is this the one about- Skating rinks and black trans am? Stretch Armstrong? Yeah, okay. All right, cool. Yeah. Oh, good. I like this song. Yeah, I'm going to edit all that part out where I sang to you. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> well, I'm going to put it back in. Yeah, but we don't have the rights to that song, so you can't. Ah, booyah. <laughs> all right, fair. I like Mark Wills. He should do more things. Anyway, back to Larry Groves. He was a 40-year-old antique dealer, and he lived in Lakeside, Indiana. And he lives alone with his two dogs, Pepper and Ruby. And he lives alone because his longtime partner of over 20 years, Tom Bennett, passed away in 2001, suddenly of a heart attack. So we know Tom didn't do it. Yeah. That's all we know, I think. (laughs) That's the only for sure thing. Yeah. So Tom was apparently at least 10 years older than Larry. And they got together when Larry was very young, like a late teen. And when he was in his late teens or early 20s, Tom got him into antique dealing. Like, he got him into the antique business, showed him the ropes, helped him figure out the business, and they kind of ran it together. Sure. They had their own shop, and they were pretty successful, and they traveled around buying and selling antiques all over the country. Tom purchased their home from his dad sometime in the 80s, and they lived there together, Tom and Larry. Right. 
But after Tom passed, the house went back to Durrell Bennett, Tom's dad. And Durrell had no intentions of living in the house or anything, so he told Larry it was his house. Like, you could stay here as long as you want. I like that name, Durrell. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Durrell. It might be Daryl and spelt kind of funky, but I'm pretty sure it's Durrell. Oh, I... I never thought to call him Daryl, but you're right. It totally could be Daryl. It's spelled D-E-R-L. Yeah. Daryl. Oh, my God. Yeah, but it very it really could be Daryl. <laughs> now that you said that, I thought it was Daryl this whole time, but Daryl. Yeah. I guess it could go either way. Daryl. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get hate, hate okay. comments for that. Yeah, I was going to say, now that you've offended a whole bunch of people. So by 2003, it had been over a year and a half since Tom had passed away. And friends of Larry said that he took Tom's passing really hard, which obviously yeah. they were together for a really long time. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be more weird if he didn't. Yeah. But he was starting to get back into a routine alone with just him and the dogs now. And he's still running their antique business and things are going okay. He's just kind of settling into single life. And then sometime around January 12th of 2003, Larry was on a late night phone call at about 11 p.m. with his friend Sandy, who lives in Biloxi, Mississippi. And this was normal for them. They talked a lot on the phone late at night. But this particular night, Sandy heard loud banging on Larry's door. And Larry said, hey, I got to call you back in like 20 minutes. I got to take care of this. And he never called her back. It's a key piece, too, that he did tell her who it was at the door. He knew who it was and said by name, hey, this is who it is. Like, it's no big deal. Like, I'll take care of it and get back to you. No, no problem. Right. We don't know who it is. Right. The police have never, ever released the name, which we'll get to. But and I understand why they haven't. Yeah. So he never calls her back. He never calls Sandy back. And by the end of January, Larry had been neglecting his business, not answering his phone. He's been neglecting his house. And nobody could get a hold of him. So his mother finally reported him missing. And the police go and check it out. But there's nothing out of place and nothing to go on at his house. They're just like, well, I'm sure they did the whole he's an adult, he'll show up thing. <laughs> it's their favorite line, no matter where they are. But months pass and no word from Larry. But that guy that was pounding on his door allegedly kept selling Larry's antiques to like a dealer in Michigan, even after Larry went missing. Can't stop the hustle. Yeah. Then in April of 2003, so three months after Larry disappears, his sister Pam went into the house with the police and it was immaculate. There was nothing out of place, nothing missing. Apparently he kept a pretty neat home. Nothing was gone except Larry and the dogs, Ruby and Pepper. And the dogs being gone is super interesting too because, I mean, you wouldn't think they would be, I guess. Would you? I mean, if I guess if, right. if he went out on his own, sure, I would think he took the dogs with him, which I think is kind of what everybody is thinking at first but right but three months into like you haven't called your mom in three months yeah really or any of your friends like he was supposedly really close with all of his friends so by memorial day weekend larry's mom went to the house he goes missing in january so memorial weekend that's like four or five months right so she goes into the house and she sits at Larry's desk and she goes through all of his shit. She goes through all of his paperwork, his business stuff. She's like, there's got to be a clue in here about where he could have gone or what happened to him. But she found nothing. So she leaves. What do you think she was expecting to find, though? Like, I mean, obviously she was looking for clues. I get that. But I wonder what she thought she was going to find. Like, I don't know, travel? maybe a note. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess so. But I would have thought, I guess, that somebody would have checked that for that already. But I guess. Yeah. Not everyone knows where to look like she would. Yeah, or maybe she would find, like, a rental agreement or something where he just, like, picked up and started over somewhere. You know, I don't know what she was looking for, but she didn't find it. Right. So by June, Larry's been missing for six months. His utilities had been turned off, and his yard was getting pretty out of control. He had, like, peach trees in his backyard that were rotting, literally. Like, the peaches were falling off and rotting. Yeah, that, I mean, that that happens. Yeah, but his neighbor, his name is Dick, he's getting pretty fed up with all the birds and everything that is being attracted because of the rotting fruit and all the overgrowth on his side of the fence. So he climbs up there and starts trimming everything back from Larry's side of the yard. When he gets up on this fence and starts cutting it back, he sees that the windows and the doors and the siding on Larry's house is like black. Yeah, like he described black. it, I was going to say, he described it as painted black too, which is like... Already, like, yeah. why would somebody paint their, like, the back part of their house black? And Yeah, and the inside of the windows, because he said it was, like, from the inside, it was black. 
Dude, that's crazy. Can you imagine just looking over and being like, what the hell is that? And no. he knows from already being over there that like Larry didn't paint the outside black. Like he knows what the backside of the house looks like. This was kind of yeah. like a new development. Yeah. And at this point, he knows Larry's missing. I mean, Larry's been missing for six months, you know? Yeah, totally. So it's like, what the hell is going on over there? Well, when he got a closer look, it turns out it wasn't paint. It was flies that were oh so thick covering the window from the inside that they looked like they were painted black. And they were on the inside, the outside, on the siding. Wow. Every They were everywhere. They were huge flies. It just sounds like an, everyone's worst nightmare, honestly. Like, everybody hates flies. And it have them so thick that the walls look black like uh, yeah it's no gross yeah nobody's happy about that yeah that's a horror movie and i don't know why his first call was not to 911 because that would have been mine but he decided to call durrell immediately and durrell came over and him and durrell went into the house and they found the most rotten putrid smell they'd ever smelt and they were like oh my gosh this is not good. They thought it was rotten food in the refrigerator because apparently there was a couple of pounds of meat in the refrigerator. I want to back up real quick just because I've been thinking it since you said it. Your first instinct would have been to call 911 because the back patio was covered in flies? Yes. From huh. the inside? Yes. Hmm. I just, I hadn't really thought of that. That makes complete sense now that you say it. But yeah, I would have been like, what the hell is that? And like, I don't know what I would have done, honestly. Like, that's a... I guess call Durrell, you know, I probably would have done yeah. the same thing, but yeah, I guess call 911. But again, what's nine? <laughs> I would, I would like to hear that 911 call because yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the operator was like, why are you calling us again? Well, for me, I would be like, oh, well, I'm pretty sure there's something dead inside this house. It's covered in flies. Yeah. I mean, it's a great way to start. But maybe that's because I know the story. So I don't know. So <laughs> could be. <laughs> yeah. So Durrell and Dick decide that it, there's a couple of pounds of rotting meat in the fridge. So they're like, well, that's got to be it. Which pretty quickly they were like, nah, that can't be it. The fridge was closed. Like, even though it smells bad when they open it, that's not where the flies are coming from. And the smell in the fridge didn't smell like what they were smelling. Well, what's weird about that, too, is that Larry was a vegetarian from what I read. So, like, why would he even have meat in the fridge to begin with, you know? Well, what I read was that he would keep meat for his dogs, that he would feed his dogs meat, but he wouldn't eat meat. Okay. I, all right. That makes sense. I mean, yeah, I probably would just give him kibble, but I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. So they keep trying to narrow down the smell because it's like, at first they're like, it's probably the meat. And then they're like, it's not the meat. They narrow the smell down to the living room, but it's immaculate. Like there's nothing going on in the living room. And then... Durrell tells Dick that there's a crawl space under the living room floor. So they move Larry's desk and roll up the carpet that was under his desk, the rug. Right. And there was a trap door in the floor. When they opened it, of course, they found the badly decomposed body of Larry Groves. Well, and remember, too, his electricity has been off. So this has had zero chance to, like, not be in the worst possible state that it could be in. Oh, yeah. His body was so decomposed that they couldn't tell cause of death. Because he was so decomposed, but they could tell that he fought really hard because there was blood and other DNA evidence on his clothing that wasn't his. So they're assuming he injured his attacker. Good for him. You know, he fought him off, at least tried as best as he could. But what's really interesting is that other people had been in the house in the first five months that he went missing and nobody ever smelled anything. His mom had been in there. Durrell had been in there. The police, his sister. His mom was just in there in May. Oh, my God. The end of May. I hadn't really thought about that. She sat at his desk and went through his papers. You're right. She would have smelled. I mean, she didn't. She says she didn't smell anything. You would think, though, that you would start to smell something by what, after a week or two? Like, I, yeah, I mean, I would think so. Wow. That makes it even more. I didn't realize that. I didn't even think about that. Even just say there was snow in Indiana, like it was freezing temperatures from January to March or even April, you would still think that when his mom was there at the end of May, that there would have been a problem by then. 
I would think. I would have thought so, too. Absolutely. So immediately they bring in their prime suspect, the guy that was banging on the door, the guy who was pretty much stealing antiques from Larry after he was already dead. Right. And he's calm and sort of cooperative at first, but then he lawyers up and they can't ask him shit else because they're like, well, he asked for a lawyer. But they were able to get his DNA for comparison with the blood and other DNA that was found on Larry's clothing. Apparently back in 2003, it took three years to get those samples back. But when the results came in in 2006, his DNA was not a match. And there have been no leads since and nobody Uh. knows who murdered Larry or what happened to his dogs. This pisses me off because who else would it be? Do the DNA again, I think. I think that's the only thing that I'm like, (laughs) yeah, that makes sense. Because who else would it be? This guy came over. He was pissed off looking to cause a problem. I think things escalated. The only other thing that I've ever really thought of with this that it could be was maybe he had somebody else with him, you know, so more like a muscle type um Mm -hmm. because like we don't know how he died either so it's though there could have been an altercation in wrestling i mean somebody he but i guess they would have known if he'd gotten shot because they would have seen an exit or an entrance or an exit wound maybe if it went through bone well i mean wouldn't it i mean it would have to wouldn't it like no you could be shot and it misses a bone but like the puncture wound would still be in the tissue which was decomposed oh fuck yeah yeah (laughs) yeah it's been, that's why they can't tell cause of death because there was no obvious harm to his bones, like no knife nicks or bullet wounds or anything like that. So they can't tell cause of death. But it obviously was pretty violent because he had somebody else's blood all over his clothing. So we have somebody else's blood, but we just don't know who it belongs to. Correct. And it doesn't belong to the person that everybody assumed did something to Larry for three years after his disappearance. Everybody was pretty sure it was that guy. And then when the DNA came back... No match. Wow. So it's somebody who's never committed a crime before. Well, I mean... The muscle he brought had never committed a crime before, which really kind of makes things interesting, too. Because, like... Yeah, but that you don't (laughs) know that. That's an assumption. Yeah, but, well, you got a better one? Well, you're assuming that because his DNA is an encodus... Correct. ...that he had never committed a crime before, but that happens all the time, that they're so backlogged on inputting offender's DNA in that it just isn't in there. And... You're also assuming that they've ran the DNA from the crime scene into CODIS in Larry's kid. Like, they may not have done any of that. Because this happened in 2003, which was right at the beginning of CODIS. Right. So, unless a detective has done it since then, mm, they may I not see. have even run it through DNA. They may not have I even run see. it through CODIS. Yeah. So, this could have been the muscle's first time causing a scene or causing a problem. Could be. Before it was in CODIS. Huh. Or like you said, it took three years to get those DNA results back. Like, are we sure they're right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Did we double check the math on that? I, like, I really think we need to at least double check, you know, like. Yeah. We need a for sure answer on this. Yeah. At least I do. Or we need them to run genetic genealogy on the DNA. Yeah. I think we should. For all cold that cases, why we should just do it. I know. Just get it figured out. Has a lot to do, I'm pretty sure, with like funding. But it seems like it, everything is going that direction. Like they're getting more and more funding for testing, stuff like that. But it just, it seems like this case is so solvable. Like they have somebody's blood. How can you not solve it? Right. And I also wonder whatever happened to Larry's dogs. Oh, yeah. Because whoever did something to Larry obviously put Larry in his crawl space. And whoever did that would have had to have known that crawl space was there. Because apparently it wasn't like common knowledge. He didn't tell a lot of people about that crawl space. Well, yeah. Why would he? I mean, his desk was over it, so he probably didn't even think about it too much. Plus, he's an antique dealer. Maybe if he had a lot of money or valuables, maybe he stored them down there. Maybe that's why he didn't tell anybody. Yeah. Maybe hmm. he used it like a safe. I never really thought about that, but I guess that, yeah, that makes a ton of sense. That's what I would do with it. Do you have any crawl spaces in your house we don't know about? No, no, You can no. tell me. It's okay. No, I live in the desert. We don't have crawl spaces. Oh. You guys didn't add one when you were redoing your house? What's that? It's okay. This is, you guys didn't put one in when you were like redoing your house? No, bud, we live in the desert. Like we, our houses are built on slabs here. We don't have crawl, like room under, the house is built directly on a giant concrete slab. That you could jackhammer into and then tunnel down into. 
I get you. No. I get you. Well, I mean, then you're fucking with the foundation of your house. So that's probably a real bad idea. Oh, well, I'm obviously not the one who's involved in any of this because I have no idea. So, yeah. The only time we've ever jackhammered into our slab is when we had that slab leak with the hot water line a couple months ago. Oh, yeah. That was a big deal. Yeah. But other than that, you try not to you try not to mess with your foundation too much. That's kind of like a general rule. I've heard that. That makes sense. Yeah. You know? yeah. Foundation <laughs> sturdy and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The cartel, though, they dig holes in the, that kind of stuff all the time to dig tunnels to Mexico and stuff. So I was thinking maybe you were cool, but I guess not. No. And you can't really dig here. Like the ground itself here is like concrete. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds terrible. That's why everybody's pools here are super shallow. Like when we lived in California, everybody had like eight, nine, ten foot deep pools. Here, everybody's pool is like six feet max because it takes like an excavator to dig six feet down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sure it does. Hell yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we had we don't have crawl spaces here, but I know what a crawl space is. Like we when I lived in California, we had a crawl space under our house, but it wasn't like the one they describe in Larry's bungalow, though. Like Larry's, they say you accessed it from a trap door in the house. But I wonder if you could also access it from outside. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. But I mean, I guess you could. Crawl spaces often have two entrances and things like that. So I can see why you'd go there. But yeah, but obviously, I mean, it's not like the killer didn't have access to the house. He obviously did because he killed him. But (laughs) and did something with his dogs, too. But it would make more sense if there was because, I mean, I think some of the implication is that his body was there for the whole six months. But why weren't we smelling it? So there's a thought maybe it was placed there. But I think for that to have happened, there would have to be something outside because. Right. That was my thought process with it, is that if the body was placed there sometime in the six months that he went missing, where was he before that, for one? And where are his dogs? And who did it? And did they do it from outside of the house? Because I think you can explain away a couple of those months of the smell, because if it snows there in Indiana, I mean, everywhere I've been in Indiana snows and gets pretty cold. So the first couple months he's missing, you can imagine that kept the smell from being a problem. Mm. Okay. But not after, like, April, May. Yeah. Hmm. It's really an interesting case, and it feels super duper solvable, and it infuriates me, because it's like you have... The killer might as well have signed his name to this crime Well, I mean, you would think with blood, that is a signature, (laughs) you know? Like, that should be... Oh, signed, sealed, delivered. That's that's blood. But we still don't know who did it. And I don't understand how we don't. I guess because we haven't ran it again. Well, and I get like in 2003, maybe not, like because they had to have somebody to compare it against. But in 2022, I don't get why it's not solved. Like you have the killer's DNA. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've, this probably hasn't been ran since the first time. And if no one's bugging them about it, then they're probably just leaving it alone, too. You know, there's lots of unsolved cases. Well, I hope at some point that they pick it back up and decide that this is solvable and is worth solving because I think Larry's family deserves answers on what happened. Absolutely. His family deserves answers. And so do we. <laughs> like, Not to take anything from his family, but I want to know what happened to him. Like this, This is why we do this is to get stuff like this out on people's radars again and hopefully get them solved. So if you're in yep. Indiana, let's solve this. Yep. That's about it for this week. So we hope you guys have a happy Halloween. And That was short. In and out. That was short. In and out. I told you. Now I want a cheeseburger. So. <laughs> well, you're coming out here soon. So you can grab one then. You can sit in that line. Yeah. We have in and out here too. I don't live on Mars. Oh, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> I always think it's just like a California thing. I forget that they do have them in Vegas now, especially yeah. and there's one like right near you. Yeah. Well, you can go you can go and wait in that line there then. Yep. All right. Well, I love you. I love you too. Don't forget to change your Amazon smile to DNA Doe Project. Hey, Find that's us on my Instagram line. at from crime to crime. Yeah, well. Uh you can go to our TikTok at from crime to crime, our Twitter at from crime the number two crime. But seriously, go to our TikTok. Eric has put in putting a ton of work into the dough you might know. So go see if there is a dough that you might know, but really Just go show her some love because you've been going above and beyond to get that looking super good. So thank you for doing all of that work because it's very hard and I've done zero percent of it. (laughs) All right. Well, I love you. (laughs) Clearly. I love you, too. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye.